applause. All right. Um, our next candidate is Adele Moza. Good evening. Good evening. On behalf of the Dearborn Board of Education, I would like to welcome Adele Moser to the interview for appointment to the seat to a seat on the Dearborn Board of Education, as well as the Henry Ford College Board of Trustees. Adele, I'm going to take just a moment to explain the process. I will have everyone introduce themselves, and then we'll have an interview. It'll take approximately 15 minutes or so. Um, the time that is remaining will be displayed on this flip chart here, so you can keep track of how much time you have left. Um, all questions will be posed by me, the board president. We will have approximately three to five questions, depending on how much time is used on each question. And we will provide you an opportunity to make a closing statement. So if I can start with um, introductions. With I'm Joe Guido. Mary Ambassy. Mary Lane via phone. Roxanne McDonald. Mary Petlichkoff. Mike Mead. Okay. Um, the first question is, why are you interested in serving on the Board of Trustees at this time? Yes. Um, I have been involved with Dearborn Public Schools. Actually, as a student first, I'm a graduate of Fortson High. And uh, I went to uh, U University of Michigan Dearborn. Uh, during my time at Fortson, I did an uh, enrollment course at uh, Henry Ford College or Henry Ford Community College as it was um, and I have been passionate about education ever since um, when I graduated from the University of Michigan in Dearborn I founded the Michigan chapter of the American Association of Yemeni Students and Professionals which is a nonprofit organization to promote higher education in our communities and the first thing that I did is I looked at the data um, from the state of Michigan of student achievements and I, I saw there is a um, the, the number of students achieving at the, the schools that I'm very interested in was not very satisfying to me so I did uh, meet with uh, the people who were passionate with uh, about higher education and, and about student achievement and, and we founded the Michigan chapter and we started doing mentoring programs at the, at the school. Uh, we talked about the to the administration of, of the things that we can improve. How do we do community outreach uh, to the parents and get them more involved? Um, so our bottom line uh, goal was how do we make students college ready and make sure that they do not uh, they do have a plan after high school. That, that's our major plan. So from there we knew that the, the, the problems of students did not occur in high school or for most of them actually occurred even prior in middle school or even in elementary. Um, so uh, since 2008 I, I, I was president of the Michigan chapter uh, for a year. Uh, we held two conferences where, the, where we discussed the issues that our students are facing and ways to solve them. Um, uh, that was in 2010, 2011, um, and then I was um, I, I was actually uh, elected to be the the public relations officer for the national organization because the sh the organization had chapters in California and had chapters in um, New York and, and D.C. So I, I held uh, w while doing that I still. Uh, was involved in, 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 in the schools here. Um, I was part of the mentoring program, uh, the successful mentoring program that we just had last year in uh, Etzel Ford, where a group of professionals would go to Etzel Ford once a month and talk to students one-on-one. -on -one. And those students are mostly at-risk students or students who needed kind of some um, mentoring and, and needed some direction. Um, so. My heart and soul, uh, soul are, is in Dearborn Public Schools. I have a son who is uh, who is enrolled in, at, at uh, Whitmore Balls Elementary, and he will be starting kindergarten um, at Gear Park. I do also have a sister who is at the STEM program, which is the uh, the new program that was developed by Dearborn Public Schools, which is amazing. She's having a great time. So I care so much about the kids and and. My drive, and I, I believe being uh, here with you, working with you, 
uh, will help those kids uh, excel to a higher new level. What specific skills and or qualifications <coughs> do you believe you would bring to the board? Well, uh, the first thing is leadership. I believe that I've held many uh, leadership posts uh, in the past that will help me uh, in, in this position. Um, as I said, with AYSB, uh, as well even at, during my university time from 2004 to 2008, I was a student senator at the uh, University of Michigan in Dearborn. I was uh, the head of the student, uh, public, student Affairs Committee which um, deals with a lot of issues that the students are facing. And uh, at the time, uh, there was a lot of tension between the administration and the student senate. And being a, a, the head of a major committee, I was able to turn that relationship into a cooperative uh, relationship. And we did meet with the administration a few times and we agreed that the library, uh, that's one of the milestones that I had, which is to open the library uh, 24 hours during final exams. Um, we looked at that from <coughs> all perspectives, financial perspectives uh, and student benefits. And uh, it, it was a great turnaround. A lot of students would show up instead of going to cafes and stay at the college. And secondly, it's still until today when I go, when, when there are final exams at the university, the library would be still open. So that's what one major uh, milestone that I, I've had there. Um, as far as uh, AYSB being a leader there, AYSB has been giving out scholarships t since 2009 to uh, many students who are from Dearborn Public Schools and even outside Dearborn Public Schools. And uh, my goal is um, how do I make the community care so much about those students? Uh, so. I reach out to so many different businesses of how can we fundraise and uh, get money, funds for, for, for those scholarships. Um, the, the last thing that I want to mention about leadership um, is that I have been reached out by the students, by the parents as, as somewhat of a community leader uh, or aspiring to be a community leader. Um, people not only call me about regarding education, but even regarding issues like, for example, when we have the pollution or we still have the pollution issues in the South End. People reach out to me all the time and actually expect me to be at meetings, expect me to, to uh, be their voice uh, as they are very under underprivileged. Um, so they are looking up to me to to become uh, their voice in, uh, and uh, deliver their aspirations and goals. Thank you. How do you see the role and responsibilities of a member of the Board of Trustees? Well, the first thing is that I, I believe to be here is, is, is more of um, uh, being tasked and, and being uh, not, not so much of a privilege. Um, I see uh, the first number one is student achievement, that we make sure that we provide quality education to our students. So that's the number one uh, major role. Uh, the second uh, major um, thing that I think a board member should be looking at is after student achievements is the staff and, and, and teachers that we have that we must attract and maintain and, and keep the best talent in, in the district or of all uh, the districts. Um, I think student achievement um, and keeping in mind the uh, keeping the talent here at the, at the district are the two first things that a board member should look out, as well as, for, uh, of course, listening to the community and, and seeing their concerns and seeing what they, uh, they want for their kids um, and, and listening. Mostly, I, I believe th this job requires a lot of listening to the parents and to the community and, and seeing what they want and what they aspire their kids to be is a major, major task. 
How do you envision becoming a productive contributing member of the existing governance team, which includes the six current board members, as well as the new superintendent and the college president? Well, um, I have worked in so many different teams. At work as a software developer, we work in so many different teams. I even work with a team in, in Europe, uh, in Germany uh, in particular. Um, so uh, I'm a team player. Um, I uh, like to uh, listen to what others have to offer before even I, I put in my opinion. And then when, once I put in my opinion, I try to reach um, uh, consensus and, and compromise sometimes. Um, I'm, I'm very good with uh, dealing with uh, kind of hard situations. Uh, we've put we've been put to the test at work so many times of delivering projects or staying up late. Uh, I'm very dedicated to what I do. Um, I'm very passionate also about this because this is something that I, I feel very passionately about. Given that both Dearborn Public Schools and Henry Ford <coughs> College share the same common Board of Trustees, what unique challenges and or opportunities do you believe are created by this relationship? And how do the two institutions collaborate on behalf of students and this community? Well, I believe we have a unique relationship, actually, uh, that we can image to the whole country. Um, uh, to, to be sitting on a school board and also on a college board is, is kind of very, very unique. Um, I think we should use that to our advantage. Um, we should improve the cohesive relationship between the university, uh, between the college and the schools. Um, I know uh, some students might be aspiring to get into universities and maybe even top universities, and we've had some students get into uh, Ivy League colleges and, and universities, and that's great. But I do believe the majority of our students do consider um, local uh, universities or, or, and colleges, in particular uh, community colleges. And now Henry Ford is a college. It's, we should improve that cohesiveness to a point where we make sure that every student is enrolled um, at either Henry Ford as a first choice or at different uh, universities and colleges. Um, we should also uh, make sure that for Henry Ford that we attract students from outside uh, Dearborn and we make it attractive as well and uh, Mr. Jensen had been amazing with his turnaround of the college when I was enrolled and what I see it today is, is, is beyond amazing my brother now is enrolled at Henry Ford College he was he just graduated from Etzel Ford and in just the difference that it has made uh, from 2004 when I was enrolled uh, as a, a dual enrollment until today is, is beyond amazing. So I think we should build on that relationship and increase the cohesiveness between the college, the counseling offices, and the, the school district. Um, we have just a few minutes left. Um, is there anything that you'd like to add or if you have a closing statement, this would be the time to make it? Sure. Uh, I do have a question before I <coughs> present my closing statement. Is in my letter of interest, I, I talked about the bridging the education gap um, between the overachieving and the underachieving students. Um, and as of course you are aware, some schools have been identified as priority schools, such as that so forth. And the reason being that it's not because many of our students are, are not doing well, it's because we have that huge gap. So what is the board, and, and in less than I guess a minute, doing for the, to, to kind of bridge that gap? Would anyone like to feel that? I've been talking all night long. I know we've shifted some funding that way. We've moved teachers, high performing teachers in that direction and uh, made that a priority. <coughs> To, uh, to get off that, that list. They, they had the added hour to the day mm -hmm. for those students in order to, and actually they, and the working. students liked it so much that uh, they wanted, they're now off 
that they have to stay on the list for three years if you're just talking about ETSO by law because they have to know that they maintain, but they've already improved over, what, 20%? Um, mm-hmm. So they've already achieved the, the um, gap closure. Mary, yeah. we have like 10 seconds. Is there anything you want so to add? So I, I, it was a great pleasure, um, and uh, I hope I'll be working with you, and I'll definitely be working with you in the future. Um, so thank you so much for the time. I, I wish I had more time to do my closing statement, but I guess uh, time is up. Or yes, I do time, have time is up. Okay. All right. Thank we you so much again. Thank you. We appreciate your interest in the vacant seats. The board is interviewing, as you know, a total of 20 applicants. We will let you know in a timely manner where you stand in our appointment process. And thank you very much for your time. And your thank interest. you so much for your time. Thank you. Good evening. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Dearborn Public Schools, I'd like to welcome Anissa Sahuba, is that close? Perfect. Oh, well, thank you, (laughs) to uh, this interview for appointment on the seat of the Board of uh, Education for Dearborn Public Schools, as well as the Henry Ford College Board of Trustees. I will take just a moment to describe for you the process. We will introduce the board real quickly to you. Um, The interview will take up to 15 minutes and uh, with time remaining at five and one minute interviews or intervals in 15 seconds, we will have a flip chart there showing what's left. Um, All questions will be posed by myself, the board president. There will be approximately three to five questions depending on how much time is um, taken for each one and we will provide you an opportunity within that 15 minutes to make a closing statement so if i can start with joe to introduce himself i am joe guido mary Bazzi. mary lane by phone <laughs> roxanne mcdonald mary petlichka mike mead it's great to meet all of you <laughs> now i'd like to start with the first question and that is why are you interested in serving on the board of trustees at this time Well, I'm very interested for several reasons. Um, Very much committed to the education of Dearborn youth and their families. Um, I'm sure as my resume states, um, you know that I'm the director of youth and education at Access. And one of our main goals is to ensure that youth have the skills that they need, the academic skills and the resources that they need to excel in school. Uh, you know, not just to graduate, but to graduate on time, to graduate with the skills that they need to do well in college and then in the modern workforce. So um, I think this would be a really, really good opportunity for me to get involved um, at an even higher level um, to help in setting the direction and um, along with all of you, of course, and um, bringing in the different resources and connecting the communities to the schools and the families. What specific skills and or qualifications do you believe you would bring to the Board of Trustees? I have an education background. Um, I attended Wayne State and I have a teaching certification from Wayne State. My major is uh, English, my minor is communications. And uh, then I went on to get my master's degree at the University of Michigan in adult instruction and performance technology. So there was a lot of focus on, um, on efficiency and uh, improving the quality of, of training, not just for the adults, but for, for any student. Um, and working towards helping them become independent learners. So that's my educational background. And as far as my work experience, I have, um, I've been the director of youth and education since 2008. And since then, I've been able to increase the numbers of students served from 
approximately 390 to over 2,000 that we're serving now. Um, we are in 26 sites at this time. Um, I led all of the fundraising efforts um, to, to be able to provide these different resources at the different schools. All of them are education focused, but they also um, focus on the comprehensive needs of the students. So it's not just the academics, but also working with the families, um, ensuring that they have opportunities that uh, might not exist at school or through their families or through their neighborhoods. Um, so I, I have that skill level in terms of um, program development, grant writing, um, bringing in resources um, outside of funding. Um, one of my skills, as, um, as those who work closely with me can tell you, is I'm a convener. I, I enjoy bringing people together that might otherwise not come together. Um, one of the things that I focused on in the past year is ensuring that um, as, as we're working with the Dearborn schools, because we're, we're actually in, in more, more districts than Dearborn, but Dearborn is, is the biggest district that we're working with right now, is making sure that the resources that we're providing are bringing together the youth of South Dearborn, East Dearborn, West Dearborn, so we have schools in th these three communities, and uh, ensuring that they have the opportunity to come together during their, their elementary years, middle school years, so that they're not just getting together for the first time during uh, high school. Um, so those, those are some of the skills that, that I can bring to the table. Um, I, in fact, just had my performance review last week, and uh, one of the things that I um, was told that I exceeded expectations on is my ability to think at a really high level, but also uh, being very, very detail-oriented. How do you see the role and responsibilities of a member of this board? How do I see the role of, of the members of this board? And the responsibilities. And both. the responsibilities. Um, I see the board as, as uh, individuals working towards setting the direction um, of the district, of course setting policies, um, engaging the community, engaging parents and, and faculty in those um, those decisions, um, setting policies, of course, in relation to recruitment, um, employment, curricula, um, budgeting, uh, evaluating the uh, uh, the superintendent and the associate superintendents. So that's that's how I see the role. Okay. How do you envision becoming a productive contributing member of the existing, existing governance team, which includes the six current board members, as well as our new superintendent and the college president? Okay. Can you repeat the first part of the question? Certainly. Just the first part. How do you envision becoming a productive contributing member of the existing governance team? So I envision you know of, of course anytime you you join a new committee um, uh, at least with me I, I want to learn more about the individuals um, what what they their backgrounds what they bring to the table and so I'm I'm a listener first and um, then I, I look at you know the, the strengths that I can bring I look at the um, the, the the issues that are at hand and uh, and just work with uh, with the with the board very closely to to get some of those things figured out. Given that both Dearborn Public Schools and the Henry Floyd College share a common board of direct oh, there was a second part to that question. Did you? Sure. What was the second part? Um, the last question no, oh no, no I'm sorry just, yeah. yeah my mistake <laughs> given that uh, Dearborn Public Schools and Henry Ford College share a common board of trustees what unique challenges or opportunities do you believe are created by this relationship and how do you see the two institutions collaborating on behalf of students in this community I think the opportunities that exist are a lot of the students uh, <coughs> Dearborn students are, or Dearborn schools are feeders into Henry Ford College. 
So I, I think it makes a lot of sense that there is that level of collaboration. Um, I see a lot of opportunities there in terms of um, how to prepare the students better. Um, perhaps the, the transition from high school to, to college. Um, I, th I think the district can give a lot of insight into um, what that tra transition may look like, maybe any changes in terms of um, some of the things happening during the first year of, uh, of a student's life in, at Henry Ford College. Um, so those are, those are some of the opportunities. And, uh, you know, and vice versa, the college can uh, inform the district what challenges exist for students, not just in their first year, but in their second year. Because a lot of what, what we hear is students really st struggle that first year um, because they're, they're not always ready for that first year of college. So having that level of conversation and working towards um, you know, some programs, perhaps, or resources that, that can happen during the high school years is really helpful. Um, we have a few, well, we have five minutes left. Um, if there's anything that you'd like to add, and uh, you also want to save some time for your closing statement. So do you have any questions for us or anything that you'd like to add? Um, I, I don't have any questions. Okay. Yes. Well, you can use your clo this time for your closing statement or anything else that you want to add. Okay. First, I'd like to thank you for your time and thank you for this opportunity. Um, I just want to restate that I feel that I have uh, the skills needed to uh, be part of a committee such as this. Uh, it's something that I've worked towards for a really long time. Um, again, my strengths are, uh, first of all, my passion lies with Dearborn youth and their families. And I'm a really, really strong believer that if we want a community or, or a city to to be healthy and to be prosperous, it all starts with education. And um, the perspective that I could bring is the community service or the human service part of this to, to the district. Um, I think a lot of you might be uh, aware that recently U of M Dearborn has combined the uh, College of Education and uh, the College of Human and Health Services. And I think that's a really, really great conversion because a lot of the challenges, um, and I feel like I'm preaching to the choir, but this is just something that um, I wanted to say. A lot of the challenges that schools have are because of some community challenges or some challenges that families have. And in my role at Access, I, I think I can bring some of the, those resources to the table and to figure out if there's a way to maybe institutionalize some of those things at, at the individual schools. So, um, because I, I really think that the community needs to work with the district and, and the parent engagement is really, really important and those are some of the things that I can bring to the table. Thank you so much. Um, as you are probably aware, we are uh, interviewing a total of 20 candidates. Yes. The board um, will let you know in a timely manner where you stand in the appointment process. So thank you for your time, thank you for coming and thank you for your interest. Thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening. Just going to, I thought I should bring snacks, but instead. <laughs> <laughs> snacks would have been good. I know. I did. I really good with my <laughs> Thank you. There's probably a ball of that. I'm not supposed to do that. Thank you.
Good evening, and on behalf of the Board of Education of Dearborn Public Schools, I would like to welcome Mary Olea, is that correct? Olea. 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 To this interview for an appointment of the seat of Dearborn Board of Education, as well as Henry Ford College Board of Trustees. I will take just a moment, uh, Mrs. Olea, to um, describe our process. I'm going to first have the board introduce themselves. And then we'll take up to 15 minutes for this, uh, this uh, interview. The time remaining will periodically be displayed on the flip chart here when there is five minutes and then one minute and then f um, 15 seconds left. All questions will be posed by me, the board president. Um, there will be approximately three to five questions depending on time. And uh, we will provide you an opportunity at the end, within the 15 minutes, to provide a closing statement. So if I can begin, I'd like to ask you, why are you interested in serving on the Board of Trustees at this time? That's an excellent question, because I, I could talk for 15 minutes on that, and I won't. <laughs> uh, basically, this if I'm so fortunate, this would be my third uh, school board to serve on. It pulls together my life's experience in education as a student, as a teacher, as an administrator, and a trustee of two school boards. Um, I am a W.K. Kellogg Fellow, and I have been trained in community service, and I feel not just that I owe service to the community, but this is the community I grew up in. And they say you can't come home again, but if you live in Dearborn, you can. What specific skills and or qualifications do you believe you would bring to the Board of Trustees? I think basically one of the things I've worked on for many, many years is, is listening to people before I jump in and, and give my own opinion. I, because the pers listening to the perspective of other people is really the only way you learn to solve problems and, and work together. Um, I, I bring the patients that I've worked on for a long time, team building experience. I've worked in school design, that was my first job. I've managed groups of people and I've been a part of several different um, faculties also, so I can see from, I think, all sides. I'm a parent of six children, and the skills that came along that I learned from that are still very important because the biggest, I think the biggest lesson was that each child was very different. And I feel that way about children in school, too. I try to see them as individuals. and and with faculty members and the community. Everyone's coming from a different place. And uh, I think I bring that kind of awareness and experience to the position. How do you see the role and the responsibilities of a member of this board? From what I've learned by experience with school boards is that Policy making is, is the most important position, uh, most important job. Frankly, the temptation is micromanagement, especially if you yourself are um, interested in the workings of a school or, or you have a certain curriculum um, favorite. But um, I think it's, it's a responsibility to the community, uh, managing the money of the taxpayers and um, aligning the policy of the board with the state legislation and national legislation. Uh, that I could say a lot more about than that you already know, though, um, because I, I find it's, it's, it's very difficult right now. There are, there's a lot of uh, pressure coming from different sides on uh, with current legislation. But um, listening to the community and following the legal responsibilities of the board is a, is a big responsibility. Communications as well. How do you envision becoming a productive, contributing member of the ex existing governance team 
which includes the six members of this board who are currently serving, the superintendent, as well as our college president. It is a team. You use the word team. And frankly, coming into a position as, as the new person requires a, a learning curve and figuring out where my skills would be needed and how I would best serve the board uh, and work uh, to fill needs of, of the district itself. Um, generally, I, I remember uh, the first school board I was on, I was very quiet. I, it took me a while to say anything because I, I didn't have my voice. I, I didn't feel confident. And I, it, takes, it takes time to feel that you really know enough about a topic to speak out, but it also takes doing your homework. And I think that's the foundation of what I'd like to say. Uh, there is a learning curve no matter what when you come to a position uh, like this. Uh, there's a lot that the public doesn't see, uh, a lot of hours put in, a lot of documents to read and people to talk to. Um, so there's just a lot of learning before I really would figure out where I was needed and I, I think I'll probably be told in some ways where I'm needed if I'm that fortunate. Given that both the Dearborn Public Schools and Henry Ford College share a common board of trustees, what unique challenges and or opportunities do you believe are created by this relationship? And also, how do you see the two institutions collaborating on behalf of students in this community? Well, I've seen already some very impressive things that are being done. Uh, because of the coordination and the opportunities offered to the students, uh, what I what I haven't been a part of is is really to see how they uh, how the faculties interact, what kind of uh, uh, information passes from one to another as curriculums change. But I think that touches on one of the most important opportunities. What we have today, I believe, is a uh, not a unique situation, but maybe more important than ever before, is a choice between running after technology and going into very intricate um, kinds of machine-controlled education and, and balancing that with human the humanities and the kinds of skills that people really need to operate in the world, the social skills. And I can see that transition could work, needs to work very closely between the high school and the colleges. It, it needs to be something that's understood at all levels. We're at a point, I think, in the in our social and, and scientific development that it's, it's hard to plan because we see changes occurring so fast. Um, I used to teach a course that I designed, a future studies class, and I started out with a questionnaire just asking the students how they would handle certain bioethical changes if they occurred. Every one of those changes has taken place now. Those were far out things when I started that class. Students would ask me, okay, we're planning for the future. How far ahead can we plan? That's a really good question because I don't know if you can imagine 20 years from now what things are going to be like, but I can't. Even just looking at the newspapers today, we hope that's a good thing, <laughs> that we're preventing a nuclear war, but we don't know. Uh, so it was five years. What kind of long-range plans do schools have? What, how do the administrators of the, of the high school or the, the, um, the Dearborn Public Schools and Henry Ford College work together planning for the future? What are the needs going to be of jobs in the future? Uh, I've noticed now there's a lot more interest in apprenticeships and uh, learning to uh, and internships. People are recognizing that jobs where you use your hands and do things that are more technical than they ever were are as important as ever, if not more. Those kinds of things need to be seen and shared by, by both entities. And uh, I think anything that can be done to avoid 
competition or um, that kind of feeling of um, one-upsmanship between the two elements would be very important as well. Well, we have just a few minutes remaining. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? Or if you have a closing statement, this would be the time to make it. Wow. Uh, no, I hadn't prepared a closing statement, but I, I guess that I would like to relate one experience that I had uh, as a kind of closing experience, that, or closing statement that explains my life. Um, I've been very fortunate. I've had my health. I've had a wonderful children and grandchildren, and I have had the opportunity to travel and learn. I've traveled to every continent, and I've even visited a school in the Antarctic. There is one. It's a preschool run by Argentina because they want to claim the Antarctic for themselves. And one of the things that I did with my grant money was to go to South Africa to meet Nelson Mandela when he <coughs> came out of Robben Island. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I told my friends I was, so I had to. And I missed him when he came off of Robben Island, so I went to his house in Soweto, and no one wanted to take me. They said, oh, you want to go to Gold Country or some other place? No, I went to go to Nelson Mandela's house, and he let me in. There was a, there was a press conference, and I stood next to him on one side and the ANC flag on the other, and I felt the power and strength of that man. And I decided, after talking with him about the future of South Africa, that I wanted to work in South African education, and therefore my dissertation is on principal leadership in South African schools and how the leadership style affects the success of the schools and the retention of the teachers, because the teachers were quitting under very poor conditions. But it's amazing that teachers will stay, not for the money, but because they feel like they're accomplishing something. And I remember that, too. And so it's that kind of experience that I think ignited in me the, the feeling that students, too, deserve to have those kind of aha experiences where they actually get out in the world and have contact with real people doing real things. And they can do what they say they can want to do as long as they tell somebody, and it might just be themselves in their room, I'm going to meet Nelson Mandela, and then you go do it. Um, thank you very much. Um, was, there, was, that anything, was there anything else you wanted to add? Oh, no. Okay. I, I wish you luck. You've had a lot of changes, and it looks like the, the district is really solid, and it's an exciting place to work. And I thank you for your time, because I do know I do know. <laughs> <laughs> As you are aware that there are 20 positions or 20 applicants that we will be interviewing. Um, so we will let you know in a timely manner where you stand in the appointment process. And I want to thank you for your time and your interest. Well, thank you. I'm sure that if you had 20 positions, the people would be happy to fill them. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all. Thank you. Well very perceptive. That, that's we like a once in a one lifetime more. thing. That's, that's a once in a lifetime oh, event. That is crazy. Once in ten lifetimes. Oh, seven thirty. And what time yeah, do you plan on meeting? Yeah, I was you must know like a block. All right, wow. next. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah we're doing great. Yeah. yeah. I'm kind of getting lightheaded. I'm ready. Um, well, when we're done, though, I just want to kind of pose a question, but. Okay. It will be quickly, but while we're in a meeting. Because otherwise, I just need a break. And, and okay. Okay. It'll, okay. Oh, when are you going to give us a break? Yeah, it'll be quick, or do you want to take five and no, then no, come back? No, no, it's okay. If the okay. next person's coming in, don't worry. Good. Oh, my God. We're friendly. Don't worry. <laughs> Good evening. On behalf of the Board of Education of Dearborn Public Schools, I want to welcome Irene Watts to the interview for appointment to a seat on the Dearborn Board of Education as well as the Henry Ford College Board of Trustees. 
Um, Mrs. Watts, I'm going to take just a moment and explain the process tonight. We will go around and introduce everyone on the board to you. Um, the interview will take up to 15 minutes. Um, time remaining will dis be displayed periodically at 5 minute, 1 minute, and 15 seconds left. Um, there will be approximately, or I, the board president, will pose all the questions. There will be approximately three to five questions um, from the board, depending on time. Okay. And uh, we will provide you an opportunity within that 15 minute span to make a closing statement. So if I could start with Joe, we'll introduce ourselves. I'm Joe Guido. Hello. Miriam Bassey. Hello. Mary Lane, my phone. <laughs> She's at her phone. Hello. Roxanne McDonald. Well, now that I'm here, huh? <laughs> I think that's a recording. She already knows She's me. Not, Mary Pat Lane. She's been gone for an hour. Hi. You just startled her, Mary. That's <laughs> I know. Like, wait a minute. I know we landed. Something happened with Pluto. But <laughs> the voice behind the curtain. From Pluto? <laughs> um, first question I'd like to pose to you is why are you interested in serving on the Board of Trustees at this time? I thought it was a great opportunity that just kind of arose. I was checking my Facebook post and it happened to come up and I thought, I'm a teacher at heart, I love kids. Um, I love my community. We do a lot of, I do a lot of outreach stuff within the community. And it kind of took both passions and blended it together. So I thought it might be a good opportunity to see whether I was qualified. And then once I put my resume together that I haven't done in 15 years, I think I might have a chance and I got excited about being able to make be a part of a greater picture something bigger than my own what specific skills and or qualifications do you believe you would bring to the board of or board of trustees as a teacher in the classroom I definitely have the experience about how it how a classroom looks like what you expect to happen and then you realize it's not going to happen um, so I have that knowledge base of what a classroom looks like on the inside but as an administration perspective as well as the assistant director I also have the flip side of knowing what a budget looks like how to make a payroll how to squeeze money to make payroll um, the, the stress of um, trying to coordinate with the state and trying to get reimbursements when you're trying to make payroll so I get I get both sides of the, ad the administration part, but also the teaching perspective. Um, so I think that gives me a really unique perspective of what um, the daily life of a teacher is, but also administration. It's not easy either side. I mean, before I was in, in administration, I didn't have to worry about anything, but now it's, are we making payroll? Is everyone getting along? What problems do I need to solve? How can we solve those problems? Um, just relating and meeting with parents on a daily basis. Um, and then speaking with those parents and hearing what their concerns are and then coming up with it, well, how do we tackle this? How can we do it together? And I mean, it's, when it comes down to it, it's all about a team. I mean, without your team, you're nothing. I mean, you're, you're on your own. And so, I mean, I view my, my work team as a family. I mean, I've been there for almost 14, 15 years now. And um, it's, I think I'm, I'm pretty blessed to be able to go to work every day. And I've only had maybe a handful of times where it was a little rough waking up in the morning, but um, overall, I think I'm super blessed to have this job, and I'm thankful that I have it, and I love what I do. How do you see the role and responsibilities of a member of this board? I think the role would be, there's many roles, <laughs> there's many hats. Um, I think it's the responsibility to not only the students, but the parents, to the support staff, to the teachers, to the principals, hearing everyone's side. Um, sometimes you um, need to be able to, when, when brought a problem, see and state the problem, but also try to f look at it from all different perspectives, because everyone has their own perspective on things. Um, to, to take a step back and say like, okay, this is, this is the problem. How can we solve it? How can we solve it together? Um, I don't like having problems in the air. I like to solve problems immediately. So that's my one downfall I would say is that I like to solve the problems. I don't like anything lingering. I don't like anything 
any problems unresolved, especially with fellow team members, because that just kind of creates stress that's unneeded, because when it comes down to it, it's not about you, it's not about me, it's all about the kids. So what can we do that's best for the kids? How can we, you know, you know, if a lesson plan isn't working today, like how do we switch this lesson plan? Sometimes you have a child who may have like a rough night and that one child can disrupt the entire classroom for the entire day. And you might want to have a plan like this is what we're going to do for small group, but that one child, it, you know, it, it's not going to happen. So you have to be quick on your feet and say, okay, this is what we're going to do instead and then make the most out of it while also trying to factor in what the state requires, what the district requires, what your directory requires, what the parents team may have an IEP, what assessments need to be done. So it, it's juggling a lot in one day, but you have to be quick on your feet. So I kind of feel like I, I do that. How do you envision becoming a productive contributing member of the existing governance team, which includes the six current board members, as well as our new superintendent and the college president? Can you repeat that one more time? Sure. Just the beginning part. How do you envision becoming a productive contributing member of the existing governance team? I think what I bring to the table that's fairly new is um, the early childhood field. Um, that's what's, when I went to school 20 years ago, it wasn't an option, it wasn't a degree. Um, and now that the Governor Snyder has been more funding towards GSRP and Head Start, um, the demand for early childhood teachers and professionals is out there. Um, the supply for graduates is pretty low. So I think knowing um, how early childhood has um, increased, the studies that are coming out, the importance of getting those low income students in a school, getting them there on time, um, increasing their attendance. Um, I think this is something that's coming out of Lansing and a lot of people are scrambling, trying to find consultants for that um, and trying to get just awareness that there are programs out there for low-income students so before they go to kindergarten they're ready they can they can sit for a couple of minutes they can problem solve that they're little citizens that they can go ahead and um, and work the problems out with their other students so the teacher doesn't have to worry about you know he's being disruptive well hopefully that's something that we teach them and we show them how to solve their own problems before they head to kindergarten so they don't become disruptive and they can figure out and be confident students. Given that both Dearborn Public Schools and Henry Ford College share a common board of trustees, what unique challenges and or opportunities do you believe are created by this relationship? And also, how do you see the two institutions collaborating, collaborating on behalf of students and this community? I think what I have found in my career um, is the opportunity for the younger children to learn from the older. And I think that would be the same thing with seeing the college students helping out the younger, I think, the younger students. I think that would be great if we could intertwine that more in our community. Um, currently I have a I have summer camp and I have some of the kids who come back and now they're 12 and 13 and seeing them read to their younger kids is a blessing. It's great to see that because they just do it on their own. Um, but it's being able to see the older kids teach the younger kids and I'm not necessarily you know, saying this is what you need to do, it's just an organic experience for the kids. And to have that confidence in the older kids and to see them just have that proud moment of like, I read him this book. and. And having that engagement and being able to say like, well, maybe they didn't think about being a teacher. Maybe they didn't have the self-confidence, but seeing those kids also who are super shy come out of their shell to a younger kid, because younger kids are sometimes intimidating to those who don't know them, but to be able to see that interaction, I think that would be great to be able to see that with um, the colleges and the high schools, um, even with the elementary schools. Um, we have some time left. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you'd like to add, or if at this time you can make a uh, closing statement, or you can do both? We have we have time. <laughs> okay. Um, I just wanted to share that growing up, I went to DC. I have my 20-year reunion coming up. I'm a little what, sad what, by then. What, what did you say? <laughs> I went to Divine Child, and I have my 20-year reunion coming up. Okay. And when I left for college, I went to U of M Dearborn, then headed out to Ann Arbor. I always said I'm not coming back home, and I, I grew up in Dearborn Heights. And luckily my mom never held me to that because I met my husband who was a fellow Dearborn graduate. He ended up at 
at U of M as well. But I met him and I knew, A, I wanted to have children, and B, I wanted to raise them in a community with our families because it, it takes a village. I couldn't do most of the stuff I do without my family. And I wanted to have a, a community with that, not only our family and friends, but something that reflected what Ann Arbor offered. And it had you know, kids from all around the world I met at U of M, and I kind of feel like dear ones like that. I, I love that my kids have friends from all around the world, and they come over and they play. And um, I really enjoy that. So that's the one part that I love about Dearborn, and I love you know all the walking trails and whatever else. But and I like that we have that here as well. It's not just a community with concrete at, at all. I mean, you see people walking all the time. People say hello. People are friendly, um, and that means a lot when you have kids to to teach them respect about seeing other people in your community. Um, and along with that is I want them to know that community is more than just what's in your home. It's your church family, it's your neighborhood, it's your neighborhood association, it's your school, and it, it expands outward. And it's just taking pride in, again, your school, your schoolwork, your house, well, except for the rooms, but, <laughs> um, and just the city that they're, they live in. And just to say, like, I'm from Dearborn, and you know, I go to, my son goes to Lindbergh, and yeah, just the pride that you have in your school. I just share that, to share that you go to Dearborn. Um, and everyone asks, you know, you teach in Saline, but your kids go to Dearborn. I say, yeah, they go to Dearborn. Like, my husband went to Dearborn High. He ended up at U of M. And they said, would you transfer from Saline? I said, no. I, no, I mean, what does that teach my kids? You know, I'm gonna move you 40 minutes away just because it's more convenient for me. This is our neighborhood. I want them to know the, the neighborhood that they live in, the neighborhood schools. So um, I just, I feel that's super strong. It's super strong to have that bond, so I think that's it. Well, we appreciate your interest in the vacant board seat. And the board is interviewing, as you probably know, a total of 20 candidates. Um, so we will let you know in a timely manner where you stand in our appointment process. Thank you for your time and thank you for your interest. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I just want to kind of pose a question to the board, and you don't have to, and you don't have to answer. Um, I just want to give you something to think about. First of all, I lost my agenda somewhere along the way. Is there anything you know, other than adjournment is all we have left? Correct? Adjournment is the only thing left. Okay. Um, I just want to kind of pose a thought to you, because we're, like I told the audience at the beginning, um, this is something that we've never experienced and we're kind of going through it as we go along. We want to be absolutely fair and absolutely transparent. We had tossed around the idea of at the end bringing forth four names. We tossed around the idea of bringing forth two names as of now. That's what we have stated. But I just want to throw the idea out there and we can perhaps either discuss it or come up with um, a final tomorrow after the meeting. But I just think with all the outstanding candidates that we've seen tomorrow, some of them have some really unique talents. Um, it's going to be a difficult choice. It's an important choice. So I just would like to throw the idea out there for you to think about it after we finish interviews tomorrow. Um, would you want to discuss the number of candidates to bring forward? Um, and, and I just, I personally think I will have a difficult time bringing forward just two. Um, yeah, I was kind of surprised when you, because I didn't know there had been a change. So either this, well, I sent it, it was a suggestion. I, yeah, so I must have missed that. But the last oh, one I, I sent you um, an email that said we've had more changes. Oh, then I missed that one. And I want to apologize to the community. We're trying to make this, you know, um, so we've had changes just to make sure that we're open and we're communicating well. So any change has um, had been discussed between me and Dr. Wilmot. Um, and then it has been gone through the board from Dr. Wilmot. We're not in direct communications about anything with each other. Um, but again, this is a difficult process and we're learning as we go because none of us have experienced it. I'm sorry. Yeah, and so I, w I was kind of surprised because because of the number of candidates and, and you know, I, I would at least like to be able to probably have a discussion with potentially more than just two candidates having it down to two I wasn't certain what was the thinking behind just limiting it to two for Monday's discussion period was there some reason behind it if, if I if I Go can ahead. I know that 
the way I understood it is kind of come to Monday's meeting with two. However, I was hoping we'd have a discussion prior to stating those, you know, those people. It's my understanding that we're meeting at six. We have at least an hour. We have well, we have an hour meeting at that point. And um, I per personally, I think I could, if, if everyone qualifies, I could bring twenty names. Mm -hmm. I mean, truth truth be told. Uh, we have a great list of candidates. Um, I, in terms of the number, I'm open to a conversation about it. Um, with that said, I want, you know, we're going to be picking the people on Monday, but. T it, and, and two makes the most sense at the end because then you vote the, well, one up or down. Well, that's well, what I'm saying is more than two because each board member will have we could each bring one. Exactly. That's true. Well, Everyone could each bring forth the same right. two, which is possible. Who so knows? It's, I don't think we're limiting it necessarily to two people to two that people. we're discussing, Correct. but right. each Correct. person's Correct. going to bring two people. But I think we always have the opportunity to have a discussion before we say our two. And that's, we might all be I, that's all I would. That's all I would like to look for is, is to make sure that we're a little bit flexible flexible come Monday to at least change up. especially especially if everybody has two different people then we may have to have conversation again anyhow yeah. so um, think about it we don't have to make the decision tonight maybe we can have another discussion at the end of tomorrow's board meeting after we've seen the rest of the candidates um, but I do think that we need to decide you know, we'll have four in mind and first bring forth our first two and have two alternates to come or something. This is, I'm just throwing out ideas or suggestions. I think we have to have an idea of how we're going to do it before Monday's meeting um, because I do think it, there's a possibility, depending on if all six of us bring, you know, what we bring, that uh, meeting might end up taking more. The, or might end up taking, you might not think it'll take an hour, but it could very well take an hour. Yes. Um, so <coughs> food for thought we can have the discussion tomorrow mm -hmm. um, but I want to be able to come to a consensus and decide how we want to handle it for Monday um, we can decide on everybody bringing forth our top two and having maybe a, two alternates or bringing forth your top four they should be ranked though the reason being is because um, you need to be able with all of us if I have my choices, then you give that number of points to your first, second, third, and fourth choice, and then it's tab tabulated. That's the easiest way to keep a vote count or a, mm -hmm. uh, a list of who is, who is at the top. Yeah. Yes. At, at the top for each so, person. So those are just my uh, thoughts. One thing that, that uh, I did talk to Mike Walmart after I saw the email, mm -hmm. and I asked him, can we put you know, our first choice on the table and then go around and that and see if we have if we're anywhere near close. If we're not, then we go to the second choice. And then we see whether you know, maybe we'll a lot of us will have the same second choice. Mm -hmm. But I I'm kinda of worried about you know, I mean with the six of us having four choices, we could have twenty. We have okay, to right. force ourselves to reach consensus. Agreed. So, um, so my proposal is to put one on the table, see if we can get anywhere with that. If we can't, then go to the next one, rather than, you know, all of us throwing out four at once, because okay. that seems like chaos to me. Okay. So, so we're still basically ranking them. Yes. Still this ranking way. them. In, right. So, so Mary, would top. I say um, kind of bring forth with four in your head ranked in the order and then we'll start with everybody's first choice and then maybe we'll only go to two maybe we'll have to go to a third and perhaps maybe a fourth well and i think good okay and I think it's I just don't want to put four out, and then you know everybody puts four out, and and we're kind of jockeying. And then we start to see, right. and then we start know, some people's feelings will get hurt, and then they're going to say, if only I had one more person. And right. So I think we should first see can we come to any consensus, or are we close? That makes and a lot of sense not, to me. Then we're really going to have to struggle. That makes a lot of sense to me. Is everyone yeah, in agreement? I'm, any I'm, other? I'm good with that. And if, if we have. I mean, if everyone wants to have a short conversation prior to putting out your first, I think there's nothing yeah, wrong with no, that. I think, yeah. I think that way, you know, somebody might come with, you know, 
two or three people or whatever it is, but here in conversation, they might change their mind. I think we always have the ability Depending to constantly on, how, on, on what your on the strong argument is exactly. for that for that uh, your reasoning behind that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I want to just remind everyone. I don't think I need to. This is a very professional board, but when we do have discussions about candidates, I want them to be all positive. Um, so just throwing that out there, but I know we are a professional board and we are professional people and we uh, care about this community. These are all so, our friends. And they're our friends. That's what makes this a more difficult choice than that of superintendent because these are our friends and our neighbors and uh, some of them we know, some of them we're getting to know. And just to know that the passion of this community is here to serve and wants and cares about our students and wants the best for them. It says a tremendous amount uh, to, about the community. And uh, again, I am appreciative of the uh, patience of the community because this may seem like a very simple um, process, but when you get into the details and you start working it through, it can become quite cumbersome and just you, you come up with difficulties you never anticipated when you look at the rules and you look at the regulations and you look at possible outcomes and we didn't think about this and how could that, you know, that could happen. So anyway, um, go ahead, Trustee uh, Guido. I was just thinking I would venture to guess that there aren't any districts that have ever had 20 good people apply for a, you know, a, a, a board seat like this. I think we're very fortunate. And uh, everything I heard today is, is in that direction, very positive. It's good. This is going to be very difficult for me. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, but to have 20 people express an interest in giving of their time for a district is, I was shocked. And, As was I. And present, pleasantly shocked that we had that kind of response. I don't, you know, I know it's taken us a lot longer now, but still, that uh, to know that there's that kind of interest in the district, when there aren't any huge issues at stake, mm -hmm. is really saying a lot for this community. Usually, you get yeah. interest when there's somebody yeah, that right, wants right, to push a some, problem some. or an issue or right. an agenda or whatever. But I really believe, from what I've noticed with the candidates, that they are genuinely ready to serve because they believe in this community and our schools and our college, of course. Um, Mary, is there anything that you want to add? Nope. Okay. Is everyone good? Good night, everyone. Will we stand? <laughs> Let me adjourn first, Mary. <laughs> we are adjourned. Thank you very much. She, re <laughs> she recorded it.